everyone. It's Cindy. Welcome back to Studio Lou. So I'm here with my wrap up today um, of my creative kind of stuff. Um, yesterday I just wanted to kind of cover my vacation and so now I'm kind of getting back into the swing of things and catching up. So yesterday I worked on um, week 27 of Ann Brooks um, 52 Tags Handmade and the theme was making this beaded kind of trim. So I used um, a vintage um, dishcloth fabric. It's linen on the back. And then I did uh, this beading. You use a long um, beading needle to just create these kind of beaded tassels with a little, uh, you make like a little lip of fabric to sew them through. And then I just added another one down here for the fun of it. And so that is that tag. Um, this week we're working on tag number 28 and this is my progress it's not finished yet i'm using some silk organza in the back with these leaves on it it's iridescent like a golden purple um and then so this wheel is the woven wheel and this is the spider web um and i'm going to be adding some more probably i feel like this needs it's not done yet it needs a little bit more going on so i will still be working away on that one this week um in terms of stitching stuff, I did do a bit while I was away. I worked on cross stitch and um, I didn't make like a ton of progress though. So I didn't bring it today to show you, but I do have something kind of cool that I'll show you. So first I'll show you. So this is what I'm working on right now. It's a patchwork kind of journal cover. I just um, stitched it all this morning and um, this might be part of an upcoming project. I have to see if it works for what I want to use it for or if it will be for something else. And then before I went on vacation, we were getting a lot of like pretty intense heat weather. So I did some ice dyeing. Um, it's hard to show you this, but I'll just kind of move it around on camera so you can see it. So this is just a cotton bed sheet from the thrift store. And um, so I soaked it in alum and um, then I dyed it with, um, Prochem MX dyes. I did a method called ice dyeing um, that I often dye my wool with. Uh, you'll see all the colors. There's blues and purples and greens and pinks. Um, some yellow bits here and there. Um, so what you essentially do is you put your fabric, you kind of scrunch it up in a tray. So I have like a large baking tray. So then you kind of lay your fabric down. And what I do is kind of, it's almost like a shibori kind of method where you kind of make twists so you kind of get these this really kind of twisty texture um, like this and when it's laying in the pan then you cover the entire thing with ice cubes from your freezer um, and then you just sprinkle your dye your dye powder on top and you just get this beautiful um, you know, modeled, like kind of tie dye looking um, fabric at the end of it all. Um, and you leave it out in the sun, in the good hot sun. Um, if you've got temperatures, you know, in the 30s, that's perfect. Um, and uh, you leave it there for the day and then run it through the washing machine. And that's what you do. And you get this beautiful fabric. <laughs> so I haven't decided what I want to do with it yet. I have a few ideas. Um, I think that that's everything that is like fabric and stitching related. I am still working away on more of these journals. I still have quite a few to go, but I'm going to take like kind of a, a break from it. Um, I'm going to work on, I feel like I'm really missing working on another sort of big journal. And I do have a couple in the works that are things that I can't share right now. Cause one is a custom order and the other is a design team project. Um, but I want to start working on another journal that I can film um, some bits and bobs with you. So what I want to work on next is where the wild things are. So I have these two books, a soft cover and a hard cover um, of the book. And I, I will need two of them, I think, at least in order to create the kind of journal that I want to create. Um, I'm probably going to make the cover from this hard cover and um, yeah that's what I'm thinking I'm gonna do and the fly papers will probably be the end papers I'm gonna build a new spine 
and yeah, I'm pretty excited to get working on it. So, um, we have a lot of, you know, a lot of stuff to work with here, which will be a really nice journal. And I'm thinking I'm going to probably do some cabbage dyeing to create some nice blue paper, uh, to go in this journal. So that is what's going to be coming up. I'll probably do like a craft along with me kind of work on this journal with me video, at least one, if not a few. I also um, have completed the sketch for the imagination blanket for July. Um, so I've, I've chosen, um, I, I drew this up yesterday. This is my rough sketch of the fishtail that um, I want to um, give away as a free pattern, an embroidery pattern. So I'm going to be um, getting that all mocked up and put on a project card probably by the end of this week. I'm a little behind this month because I was on vacation. I know I said like usually it'll be the first week of the month when I when I release a free pattern um, but I think it'll be during the month. It's not going to be like a really rigid thing. So um, anyways, this fish tail is basically my experience with my daughter fishing when she caught a bass that spit out a living crayfish um, and then wriggled off the hook and fell onto my dress and then was returned to the water from where he came. So <laughs> that's what I wanted to do for the imagination blanket. I'll release a separate video about that once I have it all ready to go and I've mocked it up in the black and white in the color on the project card um and uh provided the the at least the um dmc floss uh called for colors um i might even get a chance to start embroidering it to kind of give you some hints on how i'm going to do it um so that's that then I have a little bit of haul to share, a couple things that came while I was on vacation. So the first one is from Sublime Stitching, and it's, I guess, you know, kind of related to this whole imagination blanket project that I'm doing. So um, Sublime Stitching is a great website, um, and it's the cutest... Um, the cutest picture of Jenny Hart on her business card here. And um, it's just saying thank you, you know, for supporting Sublime Stitching. So if you're looking for really cool like patterns and supplies for doing, you know, cross stitch, embroidery, whatever, Sublime Stitching is a really great site. They've been around forever. They're definitely like pioneers of this industry. So um, of like the modern, you know, modern stitching. And she provides this fun bookmark. Um, yeah, since 2001, they've been around. So yeah, it's very, very uh, established as a business. And she always provides this cool little three simple stitches and how to do them. And honestly, this is a great guide um, to just like, if you're trying to do the imagination blanket project with me, but you're not really feeling confident that you know how to stitch that well, literally these three stitches are all you need to know. I'm going to keep this so simple. If you want to get a little more fancy, like go ahead and, and learn one stitch at a time. Like it, you don't have to know a lot about anything to get started. Right. And the cool, like the kind of interesting thing about a lot of needle arts, right, is yes, there are a lot of different stitches, but to get started, you really only need to know one or two. And then as you kind of build your, you know, mental library of knowledge, Knowledge, um, you can learn something new like um, and there's a lot of people who do great projects out there to like help that along right um, so you know I would say yeah start a start your embroidery kind of <laughs> hobby and yeah literally just the split stitch and she shows you how to do it the back stitch and the stem stitch this diagram is on her website sublime stitching you can print it out and keep it there to just you know look at these pictures but literally these simple diagrams tell you exactly what to do it's that easy if you want to go the next step look up how to make a french knot um you know which is a really easy stitch it makes this cute little circle um and that's a useful stitch to know when you want to make some like fun embroidery um but yeah anyways 
That's my little don't be afraid kind of PSA. So these are um, fine tip iron-on transfer pens. They are basically for using, like you can trace or draw onto paper with them, and then you can transfer to preheated fabric with the hot, dry iron. So you just take your fabric, run the iron over it to just warm it up for a second, then you lay your face down, lying your, um, your drawing with these. Just remember, it's going to be in reverse um, and you trace it or draw the the onto the paper and then you put it down on the on the warm fabric and then go over it with a hot dry iron and it's going to permanently add that pattern on there so it's not like those blue chalky marker pencils the air ones it's permanent so whatever you're doing um when you're using these, just keep in mind that those marker lines aren't going to disappear like, you know, usually they do when you're using um, like a chalk or like a dressmaker's pen or marker. So I got the black. Um, I got two of the black because I figure primarily I'm going to be drawing in black. Um, if you are going to be using these, like I mentioned, whatever you do is going to be in reverse. So if there's any text, keep that in mind. Um, for any patterns that you buy at Sublime Stitching, you will get like, um, she shows you the pattern in reverse as well so that you can literally trace it and she gives you color guides. Like she's really great that way. Uh, not sponsored, just impressed. <laughs> so yeah, I got a bunch of colors and a couple of blacks. So that is my little Sublime Sublime stitching haul. Um, let's get that out of the way and I'll show you the other cool stuff I got. So for some time I've been looking for, it was a Tim Holtz um, product that was released by, um, I can't remember the company, uh, but it's the... Um, what is that little, the little eye viewer toy that kids play with that has the, the reel with the little pictures on it? Oh goodness, I can't remember the name of it. Anyways, I'll show it to you. Hold on. I got really excited because I saw that um, We Are Memory Keepers released this pack right here. This is new. It's... Um, we are memory keepers revolution dies um is, is revolution the name I, I think so but it's this thing the that goes in that little kid's toy um Viewmaster reel. So I was looking for the Tim Holtz one. I've been looking for it forever. You cannot buy it. It is discontinued like so many things in like this paper art industry. I don't understand. Like this is my rant. I don't understand why certain things um, are made and then completely discontinued and they're like so useful and probably the companies who manufacture them have sold a ton of them and could continue to sell them. But no, 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 no. See, they will stop making making them so they can drive us all crazy and make us have to like search eBay like in the middle of the night you know seething trying to find things like I will reference this little friend here um <laughs> the wheel tail tab punch from Stampin' Up like why would you get rid of this it is a perfect tool for you know so many people and so many things and you can't find these things they're like $80 on eBay if you manage to find one I was lucky enough to find one from a really cool woman who knew what they were worth but still sold it to me for like you know five bucks because she's awesome so anyways off my rant this is a really cool set um I'm disappointed because this Viewmaster reel is not the size of the Tim Holtz one or of an original Viewmaster and that makes me really grumpy um but I will survive I will still probably use it they show it here like in an assemblage kind of this is a little more scrapbooky than like what I would do it's kind of like a cluster of things but there's actually a lot of cool dies in here so like that's a nice um tag topper kind of tab these little like banners um like corners, a little envelope, a longer banner, a tab, um, a hole protector, this little label, this corner, this is one of those clips that, you know, you, you, it cuts this little clip here so you could use it as like a, a tuck over. It's got a Rolodex card. It's got a frame. 
um, like a tag frame, this label, this is a square frame, and then a little circle inside. So I think it's actually a really cool set of dies. I haven't used it yet. I just uh, opened it now. So that's that one. Then because I bought from Lovecrafts and wanted free shipping, I got this one too. I guess uh, this one's called... Well, this one's called, these are layered dies. I don't know where the names, oh, I'm sorry, here it is, hold on. So this collection is called Eclectic Vintage. And then this collection, this is florals. These are these are layering, so it's layered floral. And you get all these dies to create these four layered flowers. So I thought that could be kind of cool. And like, um, you know, a, a journal that has botanicals in it. Um, those are cool dies, but the one that I, that attracted me to shopping to begin with is this one. This is the stitch card. Look at this. Yay! I see so many journal cards that are stitched in my future. So you get two dies. One is this one that has all these bumps on it. So guess what? We can now do cross stitch journal cards cool right and then you get this fun border so um yeah I'm pretty happy about that like look at the little demo picture that they've got there it's not cute I'm like so excited and it's a nice size too there it is beside my hand so um yeah I'm pretty happy about these I think that's gonna be a lot of fun I'm probably gonna try using this a little later today and then again, part of my whole need to make the amount to get free shipping, I got some holographic embossing powder. Um, Lovecrafts actually had a sale too. So I know, I think this was on sale. These might have been on sale too. I think it was like their paper crafting stuff was on sale. So um, yeah, holographic. Yay. Yeah, it was paper crafting stuff because I got these. So I got some um, Tim Holtz Ideology. Um, these are the botanical collection. And I got, even though I don't don't really need them because I had I just got a whole bunch of them more of the paper dolls so um yeah those guys and that's my whole order from Lovecrafts then um my husband he is the greatest and he found something for me that like for our wedding anniversary it was kind of like a a layover thing that he got me um or maybe yeah I think it was our wedding anniversary um he got me the popples pattern from Butterick that I have been searching for for so many years it is the three nine inch popples um for those of you who don't know me that well, I'm a massive fan of like um, 80s and 90s toys and I've been trying to make my own popples. This pattern is impossible, impossible to find and he found it uncut in Canada no less. So the patterns are all in here. I took a little look at them and I'm so excited to make them. I'm going to do something to um, probably not scan but I'm probably going to trace this pattern because like it's irreplaceable it's completely irreplaceable so yeah I'm, I'm gonna do something to try to like I don't know if I'm gonna scan it photograph it whatever I'm going to cut it out of um, I'm gonna cut the pieces I've decided not out of like paper but I'm going to go to the dollar store and get some of those really thin inexpensive um, like cutting boards that are made from like really thin plastic it's like almost like paper thin um so that I can have like a hard copy pattern to use like over and over again so that's the plan um I started working on my own freeform popple and it's actually going quite well but I packed it up because like part of the move kind of prep that I've been doing was to pack up stuff that like I didn't need hanging around um, that I wasn't gonna work on like I wasn't going to finish it like right away so I was like okay I can't have everything unpacked some things do need to be packed um, other than that, I've just been working away on like ephemera and using up bits. So I did this this morning. I've just been stitching my little paper scraps to make these little clusters. They're a lot of fun and um, they're all connected because I just kind of went one after the other on my sewing machine and I've just been working away on them. So they'll they'll be good for um, journals, for making like little clusters. Sometimes you just need a little background on a journal card or like you can use them as a spot to create like a little pocket tuck area um 
and then I just basically whip them one by one with a zigzag stitch through my machine leave them all connected and then once I'm done I just kind of cut off all the threads and I'm trying to remember to keep all my threads because I've been watching um, Ann Brooke's latest video um, where we're, we're working on our our tag the one that I showed you with the little stitched wheels and she mentioned that we should be keeping what she refers to as an ort <laughs> I don't know what that word means it's probably some kind of an English thing um, but yeah it's all of your like your threads that your throwaway kind of threads because we're gonna make a tag using these threads so um, I haven't been keeping or collecting them purposely I don't think I've probably thrown out several but um, I do probably still have some in my my work bag that I work on the project because I don't always work in a place where I can throw away my my threads so I'm trying to keep those around um, on purpose now because I'll be using them for something which is always nice it's nice to not throw things in the landfill um, I'm trying to think if I have anything else to share with you in this wrap up. I don't think I do, um, but that's okay. I can probably work on like another video making things because I need to make, I need to make labels, like little stamped labels, like the ones that I made in a past video. I'm pretty much running out of this kind of thing in my ephemera, like this ephemera book. Um, do I even have any to show you? I do. But they're kind of like the boring ones, I think. There might be a couple that aren't boring. Let me see. <laughs> they're kind of the ones that I've been not using and just letting them. Or they haven't like been available for me to... They've been buried under other things. Here we go. So here's a few. Um, so these little stamped labels. I did these on construction paper. Um, and I want to like put words and like a little motif on them. And then make some that are just plain like this. Um, yeah, so I need to make labels like this because I'm almost out and I use them a lot in my ephemera. Um, so yeah, that's the plan. I, I need to be making a bunch of stuff. So I think that being said, um, today I went for a walk and I picked a whole bunch of flowers. So I'm going to do some uh, watercolor paper eco dyeing later today uh, maybe I will do the reveal in another boiled book video because a lot of people seem to really like my boiled book video um, I know people have had some questions about that they've left on on that video which I've answered if you do have any questions about that uh, the boiled book just let me know um, in the next video just leave me a comment and I can answer them for you that's no problem um, it's a really fun project to do with kids and that's probably what I'm gonna do today so thank you so much for hanging out with me and um, I think that's all I have to wrap up for now but I will be back soon and we'll be starting the where the wild things journal uh, really soon so take care bye for now